Buckle up, everybody, because today we're diving into a topic that's super important, but honestly doesn't get enough attention, the connection between autism and depression. Yeah, you're right. It often slips through the cracks, even for those of us who work with autistic individuals all the time. And knowing you were interested in Sheep ABA, the source you sent over, wow, it really blew my mind, especially how it digs into the relationship between autism and depression. Seriously. At first, I was all about the whole cost-effectiveness angle of different therapies. But the way this source breaks down this link is just incredible. It starts by looking at the similarities between autism and depression. On the surface, they can seem pretty similar, even though they're totally different at their core, right? Absolutely. It's like having two completely different jigsaw puzzles that just happen to use some of the same pieces. Both autistic individuals and people with depression can have a hard time in social situations, and that can lead some people to think they're the same thing. Okay, so how can they both struggle socially, but for totally different reasons? It all comes down to the why. Let's say you're at a party, someone cracks a joke. An autistic person might not understand why everyone's laughing like they missed the joke or the social cue. But someone with depression, they might get the joke. They just might not have the energy to react, you know? They might feel totally withdrawn from the whole social interaction. Wow, that's a really clear way to put it. Mm. Same situation, totally different experiences going on internally. It reminds me of what the source said about emotional regulation being a common thread. Absolutely. The source uses this powerful analogy of comparing intense emotions to like a tidal wave. Both autistic individuals and those with depression, they can feel overwhelmed by these emotional waves. But how they react or how they cope, that's where you see the differences. Okay, this is where it gets really interesting. I'm picturing two very different reactions to this emotional tidal wave. Mm -hmm. So what happens? What do these different coping mechanisms actually look like? So the source explains that for someone on the spectrum, these huge feelings can lead to what we call meltdowns or shutdowns. It's like their system is overloaded and can't process everything. So they might have this really intense visible reaction or they might completely withdraw. Right. Like their way of trying to regain some control when they're feeling overwhelmed. Yeah. What about someone with depression? How do they usually respond to this tidal wave of emotion? Well, the source points out that for someone with depression, this often comes out as this heavy, intense feeling of sadness or hopelessness that kind of washes over them and can be really hard to escape. It's less about a sudden outburst and more of this constant weight they're carrying around. So it's not always as outwardly visible as a meltdown, but it's still incredibly intense and all-consuming in a different way. This source is really highlighting the importance of looking past just the behavior yeah. and really trying to understand what's happening for the person internally. Exactly. And then there's another layer to this, which the source mentions briefly, and that's sensory sensitivities. They're often more common in autism, but people with depression can experience them too, which just adds another layer of complexity to the picture. So things like being really sensitive to loud noises or bright lights or certain textures, that kind of thing. Exactly. And the source makes this really interesting point that while these sensitivities can happen in both groups, for someone dealing with both autism and depression, those feelings can be magnified, like exponentially. Imagine going to a loud, crowded concert, overwhelming for anyone, right? For sure. Now, add on top of that the heightened sensory input for someone with autism, plus the emotional weight of depression. And it really paints a picture of how challenging it can be for these individuals. So we've talked about how these two can look really similar on the surface, but this source you found is also really clear that at their core, they are very different things. It's more than just similar symptoms. It's about understanding what's actually causing those symptoms. Exactly. Think about it this way. Autism really impacts how a person experiences the world around them. It influences their communication style, how they interact socially, even just how they process their senses. So it's kind of like the blueprint for their brain. Yes. Yeah. And that blueprint influences everything. Depression, on the other hand, is all about mood. This constant feeling of sadness, emptiness, not being interested in things. That's the core of it. Okay, that makes sense. But how do you tell the difference, especially with things like the social struggles, when there's so much overlap in how these conditions can actually show up? That's where you really need to understand those core differences I was talking about. The source mentions that age of onset can be a big clue. Autism usually shows up pretty early, like before a child turns three. But depression, that can happen at any age. So someone starts showing these kinds of symptoms later in life, maybe after something really rough happens, a traumatic event, or a big life change more likely to be depression, at least at first. Could be, but it's not a guarantee. The source stresses that we can't just focus on one thing. You've got to look at the whole picture. 
their personal history. Have they had any other diagnoses? What specific symptoms do they have? It's about the whole person, not just checking boxes. Like detective work. <laughs> And speaking of tools, the source also talks about how the treatments for autism and depression are really different. Absolutely. And that actually ties back into your interest in cheap ABA. Because, yeah, being cost effective is important. But the big thing is you need different tools for different jobs. Can't treat them the same way and expect the same results. Right. It's like using a hammer when what you really need is a screwdriver. Okay. So break it down for me. What are the different approaches and what does the source highlight about them. So for autism, they focus on things like ABA applied behavioral analysis, which really gets down to understanding behavior and teaching new skills through positive reinforcement. And one reason ABA can be so helpful for autistic people is that it can be tailored for each person. You know, it's not a one size fits all kind of thing. It's about finding what works best for that person and the specific challenges they're facing. Exactly. But for depression, the source talks about a whole bunch of different approaches like therapy, maybe medication, even just changes to their lifestyle. It really varies depending on the individual and how severe it is. But the point is, we can't treat them as two totally separate conditions, you know. We have to think about how they impact the person as a whole. So if someone is dealing with both, you need a treatment plan that considers both autism and depression. It's not just double the work. It's about how they work together. Exactly. And that's why this source is so useful. It doesn't pretend this is easy. In fact, it gave a really surprising statistic about how often this actually happens, how common it is for someone to have both conditions. And I have to admit, it really made me stop and think. Okay, you can't just drop a bombshell statistic like that and not tell me. What does it say? Okay, you can't just drop a bombshell statistic like that and not tell me. What does it say? So get this. The source says that up to half of autistic individuals might experience depression at some point. That's way higher than for people who aren't autistic. Wow, oh, half. I had no idea it was that common really shows you how important it is to understand this connection. We're not just talking about a few people here. It's a huge number of autistic people facing this on top of everything else. Exactly. And it shows why we can't just focus on one or the other. It's not random chance that these two often go together. The source talks about why that might be. And it's honestly really eye-opening about how autism and depression can be connected. Okay, so what does the source say about why this link is so strong? I'm really curious to dig into this more. One of the biggest things they talk about is social isolation. We talked about those social challenges being common in autism. And, well, that can so easily lead to loneliness, which it's a huge risk factor for depression, right? That makes a lot of sense. If yeah. you're always feeling like you're on the outside, like you don't quite get it or fit in, it's got to take a toll. And it goes beyond just having trouble connecting. The source even points out how much pressure a lot of autistic people feel to, like, mask their true selves, you know, to hide their natural ways of communicating or interacting so they blend in better. Think how tiring that must be to do all the time. It's like they're carrying this weight no one else can see, this constant effort to be someone they're not. And you mentioned earlier, source talking about bullying and stigma. That's got to play a role, too. For sure. They talk about how many autistic individuals, especially kids and teenagers, they get bullied or excluded just for being different. And it's not just other kids. It can be teachers, family, even strangers who make them feel judged. That constant negativity over time, it wears you down, makes you feel hopeless, which are like classic signs of depression. It's just not right that something about how their brain works, something that makes them them, is used against them like that. And we were saying earlier how the world isn't always set up with neurodiversity in mind. That's another layer of stress, too. Exactly. This constant struggle to deal with a world that feels overwhelming, that doesn't always get their sensory needs or how they communicate best. It's draining. The source even calls it a type of chronic stress that can make depression more likely. It's like they're always swimming upstream, you know, so, yeah. always having to fight harder just to exist in a world that wasn't made for them. No wonder depression is so common. But. The source doesn't just leave us with a bunch of stats and depressing facts, does it? No, thankfully not. It actually ends on a hopeful note, which is great. There's a whole section about practical stuff we can do to help, filled with useful advice. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready for some hope. What does it suggest? Especially thinking about more affordable options, like, you know, I'm interested in with cheap ABA, anything about that? There is. It reminds us that while things like ABA are super important, especially for younger people, sometimes the most helpful support starts much simpler and cheaper. Talking openly and honestly, it's about making it safe for them to share what they're feeling, whether it's sadness, anger, whatever, even just feeling overwhelmed. 
And that starts with us really listening. Makes you think about those communication differences. We can't expect them to express it in a way that comes naturally to us, especially if they're dealing with depression too. We gotta meet them where they are. Exactly. And that might mean getting creative, using visuals, writing things down, even just being okay with silence. They also talk about finding a therapist who gets it, specializes in both autism and depression, who understands how they connect. Because it's not like treating two separate things next to each other, right? Yeah. You need someone who sees how they affect each other, a more holistic approach. Exactly. And it goes beyond just therapy, too. The source talks about how important it is to help build social connections that feel safe and genuine, like maybe through shared interests or hobbies. They even suggest looking for groups online where autistic people can connect because they get it, you know? So like if someone loves to draw, maybe it's about finding an online art class or a forum where they can talk to other autistic artists. That could help with that isolation we talked about. Um. And it's probably more affordable than some therapies. Right. And then they talk about mindfulness and coping skills. These can be really powerful for people with both autism and depression. Hmm. Things like meditation, even just having a calm down space when things get overwhelming. It's like giving them a toolkit. You yeah. Know, different things they can try whenever they need to. The more tools, the better they can handle those e emotional tidal waves. Love that. What's so powerful about the source is that it reminds us that support doesn't have to be complicated or cost a ton of money. Sometimes the most helpful thing is just listening with empathy, letting them know their feelings are valid and showing them they're seen and understood for who they are. This deep dive has been seriously eye opening. I think it goes way beyond just autism or things like cheap ABA. It's about remembering the human being, appreciating what makes each person unique, and supporting them to be themselves in a world that doesn't always make that easy. Perfectly said. And while this source mostly talked about kids and teenagers, it leaves us with something important to think about. How might it be different for adults with autism and depression? Do we need more research on that, more awareness, something to keep in mind as you continue your own deep dive?